So I'm reading in 1 Kings 18, 19, 20, and into 2 Kings as well. And I was just um, looking at Elijah and how God used him. He was a prophet, and God called him to do pretty hard things, basically to um, call out the other people who were the Lord's to trust in God or trust in man. Um, in 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 21, he says, How long will you waver between two opinions? If the Lord is God, follow him. But if Baal, follow him. So he's calling them as the Lord has asked him to um, through the Lord's strength. And then as he continues to go on, he is confronted with, with evil um, through Jezebel, who is the deceiver, who always wants to come in and question um, or put uh, guilt and condemnation on God's people. And, but for God and the purposes of God, there's a portion of scripture in 1 Corinthians chapter 19 where Ahab um, told Jezebel everything that Elijah had done and how he had killed all the prophets with the sword. So Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah saying, now Jezebel is the, is the tempter for all intents and purposes, the evil one. And may the gods punish me and do so severely if I don't make your life like the life of one of them by this time tomorrow. So she, so Jezebel was, was saying, you're going to die, which we get that a lot. Uh, as, as we walk closely with the Lord. And in verse 3, chapter 19, he says, Then Elijah became afraid and immediately ran for his life. When he came to Beersheba that belonged to Judah, he left his servant there, but he went on a day's journey into the wilderness. He sat down under a broom tree and prayed that he might die. He said, I have had enough Lord, take my life, for I am no better than my ancestors. Then he lay down and slept under the broom tree. And by the grace of God, that is God's provision for him to actually lay down and go to sleep with all of those, those thoughts and those fears um, trying to take him down through the tempter of Jezebel and all that that she was saying to him. Um, and then the next verse is suddenly an angel touched him. The angel said, get up and eat. Then he looked and there at his head was a loaf of bread baked over hot stones and a jug of water. So he ate and drank and lay down again. Then the angel of the Lord returned for a second time and touched him and said, get up and eat or the journey will be too much for you. So he got up, ate and drank. Then on the strength from that food, he walked 40 days and 40 nights to Harob, the mountain of God. He entered a cave there and spent the night. So it's just, um, it just amazes me how the Lord in his goodness causes his people to trust in God and not in themselves. Um, and in fact, it's in Jeremiah 17, 5 through 10. I love the word of God because he is very clear. He doesn't mince words. And um, if he says it, it is. And uh, so Jeremiah 17, 5 through 7, um, we're talking about what a curse looks like and what a blessing looks like. God says uh, in verse 5, this is what the Lord says. Cursed is the person who trusts in mankind. He makes human flesh his strength, and his heart turns from the Lord. He will be like a juniper in the Arabah. He cannot see when good comes, mm. but dwells in the parched places in the wilderness, in a salt land where no one lives. No one lives. That man is cursed, and he cannot see when good comes. He just can't see it at all. 
Verse 7, the person who trusts in the Lord, whose confidence indeed is the Lord, is blessed. He will be like a tree planted by water. It sends its roots out toward a stream. It doesn't fear when heat comes and its foliage remains green. It will not worry in a year of drought or cease producing fruit. That is the Lord. That can only be the Lord. And so as a child of God, our dependence on him is what shows the world that he is the Lord. Our dependence on him, our submission to his holy word and obedience to the things that he says. Am I putting my trust in my finances, in my family, in my business, in my kids, in my spouse? Or is my trust in the Lord? And let me tell you, I can hardly articulate the confidence from God that comes when my trust is in him. It is like I can scale walls. And it's hard to articulate into words the gift of following Jesus, the gift of depending on my Father to meet all my needs. And we are needy. We are needy. Whether you believe that or not, you are needy. You need. And you are looking for the fulfillment in other people and other things to fulfill those needs. And how exhausting and how insecure and how miserable that is to look to other things and other people to meet your needs. And so that's why I have, the joy of the Lord is my strength because of the dependence that he has walked me through, that he has He has brought me through the trenches, refined me as fire to trust him and him alone. And so I'm grateful for that. It is the grace of God. And those, that's the blessed people. That is a blessing. That is amazing grace. And it is, it is the greatest gift that a person on the earth can have is to be filled with the Holy Spirit, able to depend on the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings and to me, the rock of my salvation. So whether I am high, whether my circumstances are, are super duper great or whether they're sad and grieving, um, my trust is in the Lord. My trust is in the Lord. He has my life. And um, it's, 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 it's supernatural. It is not something that can be attained apart from the Lord. Absolutely not. And Hebrews, um, let me look at it. Hebrews chapter 3, verse 15, or 13. I just want to, I'm sorry, verse 15. Um, I do need to just read this one simple verse because it's important because God has something to say. He has something to say. Yes, we can give him all of our heart and that's what he wants. He wants us to come to him through the blood of Jesus, um, through the, the way and the truth and the life through, that is Christ, the risen King. He wants us to come, but he also in that coming and giving everything that's in our heart. It can be everything. It doesn't have to be hindered or withheld. You can say exactly what's on your heart and mind. And God wants to respond to you in that. So in verse um, chapter, Hebrews chapter 3, verse 15, he says today, this is important. If you hear his voice, if you hear his voice, if he tells you about himself, do not harden your hearts as in the rebellion. Do not harden your heart. 
Do not say, yeah, 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 I got it though. N yeah, I, I hear what you're saying, but I, I'm going to fix it. I'm going to do it. I, I got it. Thank you for hearing me, Lord. Do not do that. He has a response. His word has a response. He has an answer in his word. And it will corroborate through the power of the Holy Spirit. It will corroborate what he wants you to do. And it might not seem pretty. It might not even seem logical. Okay. But he has a word for you. So do not harden your hearts when you hear his voice. Go in the way of the Lord. Walk and follow him. Depend on what he says. You can take it to the bank. Um, the gift of God is simply that. To listen to him. To respond to him. And to to. To know the joy that comes from not doing our own thing. From not doing what, what we've always done in the past. You know, there's a, there's a, a worldly quote. I think it says something like, um, the definition of insanity is continuing to do the same thing over and over again, expecting different results. I mean, God doesn't talk about that in the scriptures, but he shares with us um, what it looks like to be blessed and what it looks like to be cursed. And those who are cursed trust in themselves. They trust in other things. They, they, they feel like in a minute that, that, that will fix everything if I do this, that, and the other thing. But God, trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord. Listen to him. He wants to speak to you directly. Not through, not through a, a, a massive church gathering, but he has a word for you personally. And if you get with him and ask him to reveal that to you, he will. He will. So do not harden your heart when you hear his voice. Do not harden your heart. And if you have a question, ask him. Ask him again. Say, is this what you really mean, Lord? And show me in your word where you say that. And um, the blessing comes from trusting in the Lord. And so how, how in the world could we live any other way? There is no other life. There is no other life. There's only death. And so I just thank God that he injected himself, brought me out of darkness into his marvelous light to reveal himself to me personally so that I could walk with him and trust in him and know that he is my strength, that I have nothing. I can do nothing apart from him. So I pray today that as we go into the word of God, we will be transformed. And to ask him to transform us is another gift from the Lord. Nobody wants to be transformed. Everyone has justification why they are the way they are. But in the Lord, that's his, that's what he does. He refines his people um, as silver, like in fire to, um, to make, to make, so the silversmith can see his image in the material and he wants to see his image in his people. What a gift, what a gift. And so I pray that, um, that this would bless you today, that there was something in there that, that I know that I needed for sure. And I just wanted to share with all of you. So have a blessed day. Thank you. Love y'all. Bye-bye.